Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and welcome to your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will cover all the topics on the ASCP lecture list to help you prepare for your upcoming exam. Today, we will discuss other proteins of importance. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to get updates on our new videos. If you find our content helpful, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Myoglobin, the oxygen carrier in your muscles. What it is? Myoglobin is a protein found in muscle cells, particularly skeletal and cardiac muscle. It contains an iron-containing group called heme, similar to hemoglobin in red blood cells. This protein acts like a mini-oxygen tank, storing oxygen for muscle cells to use when needed. How it works? Myoglobin binds oxygen more tightly than hemoglobin. This allows it to grab onto oxygen even in low oxygen environments. When muscles need a burst of energy, myoglobin releases the stored oxygen to fuel muscle activity. Myoglobin as a heart attack marker. When muscle tissue is damaged, myoglobin leaks into the bloodstream. Doctors can measure myoglobin levels to help diagnose a heart attack, AMI. Myoglobin levels rise quickly after a heart attack, within 2 to 3 hours, and peak within 8 to 12 hours. They then return to normal within 18 to 30 hours as the kidneys filter myoglobin out of the blood. Limitations of myoglobin test Myoglobin levels can also be elevated due to other muscle injuries, not just heart attacks. This means a high myoglobin level isn't a definitive sign of a heart attack. Doctors often use myoglobin in conjunction with other tests, like troponin, for a more accurate diagnosis. Additional points High levels of myoglobin can be toxic to the kidneys, especially in severe muscle damage. Several tests can measure myoglobin levels in the blood, including ELISA and immunochromatography. Cardiac troponin, a key player in heart attack diagnosis. What is it? Cardiac troponin, CTN, is a complex protein found only in heart muscle cells. It consists of two main parts, troponin I, CTN I, and troponin T, CTNT. Why is it important? When heart muscle is damaged, CTN levels leak into the bloodstream. Measuring CTN levels is a crucial tool for diagnosing a heart attack, acute coronary syndrome, ACS. How is it used? Doctors should measure CTN levels in patients with symptoms suggesting a heart attack, along with other tests like ECG and physical exam. There's a specific cutoff level for abnormal CTN, aiding diagnosis. Why is it better than other tests? CTN is very specific to heart muscle, so a high level strongly indicates heart damage. It stays elevated for a longer time compared to other tests like CKMB. How to interpret CTN results? Normal CK, CKMB, and myoglobin with elevated troponin might indicate a minor heart injury, an older injury, over 24 hours. Normal initial troponin with later rise suggests a recent injury, within hours. Elevated CK but normal CKMB and troponin suggests a non-heart muscle issue, as skeletal muscle injury. Additional points. Ideally, each lab should define its own cutoff level based on their patient population. The test uses two monoclonal antibodies to detect troponin in blood samples. Brain natriuretic peptide, BNP, and N-terminal pro-BNP, NT pro-BNP helping diagnose heart failure. What are they? BNP, brain natriuretic peptide, and NT pro-BNP, N-terminal pro-BNP, belong to a family of hormones known as natriuretic peptides. These hormones play a role in regulating fluid balance and blood pressure in the body. How are they produced? Both BNP and NT pro BNP are created from a larger protein molecule in heart muscle cells. NT pro BNP is an inactive fragment, while BNP is the active part. Why are they important? When the heart is struggling to pump blood effectively, congestive heart failure, 
levels of BNP and NT pro BNP rise in the bloodstream. Measuring these levels can help diagnose heart failure. Where are they found? BNP and NT pro BNP are mainly produced in the heart ventricles, especially the left ventricle. Smaller amounts are also found in the heart atria. How are they measured? Blood tests using various techniques like immunoradiometric assay or ECLIA can measure BNP and NT pro BNP levels. Don't miss your chance to get more than 50% off on the ASCP short notes in hematology this week from Amazon. The link is in the description. Key points to remember. Increased BNP or NT pro BNP levels can indicate heart failure, but other tests are also needed for confirmation. These tests are becoming increasingly popular for diagnosing heart failure. Fibronectin, the glue holding your body together. What is it? Fibronectin is a large protein found in your blood, plasma, and on the surfaces of many cells. It's made from two very similar pieces, but a single gene can create different versions of fibronectin by mixing and matching parts. What does it do? This protein acts like cellular glue, helping cells stick together and to surrounding tissues. It plays a role in various important processes like cell growth and development, wound healing, tissue formation. Where does it come from? Your liver, cells lining your blood vessels, immune cells in your belly, and skin cells can all make fibronectin. Fibronectin and pregnancy. A specific type of fibronectin, called fetal fibronectin, FFN, is found in the amniotic sac during early pregnancy. FFN helps the placenta stick to the uterus. Normally, FFN disappears from the amniotic fluid by 24 weeks. If FFN is present later in pregnancy, between 22 to 36 weeks, it could indicate a problem with the placenta and a higher risk of premature birth. Adiponectin the fat hormone keeping you healthy. Adiponectin is a hormone made by your fat cells, adipocytes. It's a protein made of 247 amino acids with two distinct parts. It travels in your blood in groups of three, trimers, or six, hexamers, or even larger clumps. The good news. Studies suggest higher levels of adiponectin might be linked to a lower risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, a combination of health issues like high blood pressure and unhealthy cholesterol, obesity. The potential connection. Research shows a possible link between body mass index, BMI, and adiponectin levels. People with lower BMI tend to have higher adiponectin levels. Important note. More research is needed to fully understand the exact role of adiponectin in these health conditions. Beta trace protein, BTP a potential new biomarker. What is it? BTP, beta trace protein, is a small protein, 168 amino acids, belonging to the Lipocalin family. What can it tell us? Recently, BTP has shown promise as a marker for two things. Spinal fluid leaks, BTP levels seem to be a reliable indicator of leakage of cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, the fluid surrounding your brain and spinal cord. Kidney function, while not as sensitive as cystatin C, another marker, BTP levels might offer clues about impaired kidney function. Limitations and the future. While BTP correlates with other kidney function tests, it's not yet a definitive way to diagnose problems. More research is needed to understand the full potential of BTP as a biomarker. Scientists are looking into what BTP levels might tell us about kidney health beyond what other tests reveal. Whether BTP could be a better marker for specific kidney problems. Keeping an eye on bone health, understanding CTX tests. What are CTXs? CTX, cross-linked C-telepeptides, are tiny protein fragments created during normal bone breakdown, resorption. They can be measured in your blood or urine to assess bone resorption activity. Why are CTX levels important? Bone is constantly being broken down and rebuilt. 
CTX levels reflect how fast this breakdown is happening. Increased bone breakdown can be a sign of osteoporosis, a condition that weakens bones. When are CTX levels helpful? Monitoring treatment, after starting medication to slow bone breakdown, antiresorptive therapy, CTX levels can be used to track how well the treatment is working. Ideally, CTX levels should decrease after 3 to 6 months of effective treatment. Limitations of CTX tests Baseline needed, to interpret CTX results, doctors need a baseline measurement from before treatment starts. Variability, CTX levels can be affected by factors like diet, exercise, and even the time of day the test is done. Not a replacement, CTX tests cannot diagnose osteoporosis on their own. Bone density scans, DXA, are still the gold standard for diagnosis. Benefits of CTX tests Non-invasive, no needles or special procedures are required. Repeatable, CTX tests can be done frequently to monitor treatment progress. Easy to measure, ECLIA technology allows for automated and accurate measurement of CTX levels in a lab setting. Cystotin C, a promising new marker for kidney health. What is cystotin C? Cystotin C is a small protein, 120 amino acids, that acts as an inhibitor for a specific enzyme group, cysteine proteinases. It's produced and broken down at a steady rate in your body. Why is cystotin C important for your kidneys? Cystotin C is a recent candidate for a new way to assess how well your kidneys are filtering waste products from your blood, glomerular filtration rate. Normally, cystotin C is filtered by your kidneys and then reabsorbed by the kidney cells for breakdown. When your kidneys aren't functioning well, GFR is reduced, cystotin C levels rise in your blood, acting as a marker for kidney health. Advantages of cystotin C test Unlike creatinine, a commonly used kidney function marker, cystotin C levels are not affected by muscle mass, gender, age, race. It's also less influenced by factors like medications, infections, diet, or inflammation. When might cystotin C be used? Cystotin C may be a better alternative to creatinine tests in certain cases, such as people with cirrhosis, liver scarring, obese individuals, malnourished patients. Those with reduced muscle mass. It might also be useful for monitoring kidney function over time. Limitations of Cystotin C Test While research is promising, there's still some uncertainty about the best way to use this test in clinical practice. More research is needed to fully understand its role. Additional points. Cystotin C levels are measured in a lab using specific methods, particle-enhanced immunoturbidimetry or immunonephilometry. These methods are FDA-approved and can be automated for faster results. Amyloids, the sticky proteins causing organ damage. What are amyloids? Imagine proteins like beads on a string. In amyloidosis, these beads fold abnormally and clump together, forming sticky, insoluble fibers called amyloids. These amyloid fibers stain red with a special dye called Congo red. How do amyloids cause problems? These sticky protein clumps can build up in various organs like the heart, brain, kidneys, and liver. This buildup disrupts how these organs function and can lead to organ failure. What causes amyloidosis? Amyloidosis can be Inherited, faulty genes lead to abnormal protein production. Acquired, caused by chronic infections, cancers, or autoimmune diseases, all of which can trigger abnormal protein production. Diagnosing amyloidosis and Alzheimer's Two specific proteins, A-beta-4-2 and tau, are associated with Alzheimer's disease, a form of dementia. Tests for these proteins, done on cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid surrounding the brain, are not routine but can be used in some cases. High tau and low A-beta-4-2 levels might suggest a higher chance of Alzheimer's, but it's not a definitive diagnosis. Normal levels of these proteins indicate other causes for dementia are more likely. Important note. 
These tau and A-beta-42 tests are mainly used in research settings and not typical patient assessments. Don't keep all this valuable information to yourself, share it with your friends who might find it interesting and beneficial. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. We love hearing from our viewers and we will do our best to answer all your questions. And finally, don't forget to ask for our ASCP short notes to supplement your studying. These notes are a great resource to help you review and retain the information we cover in our videos.